Hello, I'm Dr. Grant Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center. This is my colleague and friend, Dr. Zenovi Mailer, also from Princeton Spine and Joint Center, and Hi. my colleague and friend from Active Core, Dr. Adrian Jensen. We're going to be going over uh, exercises that you can do to help with knee pain uh, today. And Dr. Jensen is going to walk us through her favorite, which means they are the best, exercises for uh, knee pain. And with right. that. So uh, we're going to start with some muscle groups on the back of your body because a big reason a lot of people experience knee pain is because it's so easy to overutilize your quads. And so when you overutilize your quads, your quads get really, really tight and it pushes your kneecaps to your legs and that usually causes a lot of knee pain. So the more we can turn on the back of your body and the outsides of your hips and your calves, knee pain relaxes. So right. tried and true, we're going to go on the floor. I don't care. Okay. Whichever one of you wants to go we first. Can, we, can, we can switch off. We didn't plan this ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, 20 years of planning. He always gets the, to uh, do the glute bridges. <laughs> 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 so he knows. All right. So I'm well, going to give you your pillow back. Thank you very much. All right. So main muscle that counteracts quads and actively stretches the quads without actually stretching the quads is getting your glutes firing. So pelvic tilt. Make your low back touch the floor, toes up, push down into your heels, lift off the ground by pushing down, feel those glutes working, feel <laughs> those quads stretching. He's getting really good at these. Yeah, if you go to our hip pain uh, exercises, <laughs> you'll, you'll find a very similar slash exactly the same exercise. Uh, but they're very important. It's a, I mean, it's, it's, a, a really it's, a, it's a really important exercise. Honestly, I do, with almost any pain, it's like glute bridges and T-spine mobility. Yeah. It's the foundation, so it's a really important thing. It's closest to your pelvis. It kind of attaches your legs to your body. If they're not working right, a lot of things don't work right. Yeah. All right, so we can advance this one a little bit. So if you can do a double leg glute bridge and feel both legs, then you can kind of experiment. Okay, maybe your right knee hurts, but your left glute is the one that's a little sleepier or not really working the way it needs to. So come on up, push down into your heels, and then can you lift one of your legs without letting anything tip or move? So you're gonna feel that left glute working a lot more, oh, yeah. put it right down, and then can you lift your other leg without, is that one easier? It actually looks a little bit easier, little believe it or not. Nice. Good, and then lower and then all the way down. So come up, march, march, and then down. And Dr. Mailer is our, our sporty model. So he's, he's actually doing this really well. When I was doing this, I remember my, my pelvis would tend to rotate. Yeah, you want and to that avoid was, that tipping. Yeah, that, that was something that really, by, by focusing on that, that made a big difference in terms of just feeling the exercise correctly and not letting myself cheat. Yeah. Right, so like not dipping. The, 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 I absolutely the, feel the difference between, between the right and left with the right. I feel like it's fine with the left. I actually have to concentrate because this wants to yeah, go. It wants exactly. to go. Right, so right, you feel right. how your abdominals kind of kick in when you that's lift that right leg? So it's not just a left glute exercise when you lift your right leg. You're actually using the abdominals that keep your pelvis level on the right side because it's no longer supported by the leg. Right. So it has to be supported by something here. So it's really a balance. You're doing flexion through the right, extension through the left. And this is how we move when you walk. You're never on one leg at the, or two legs at the same time. Well, you are, but for a short period of time, but you're in a split stance. Good, so glute bridges is number one, and you could advance it by trying a version of a single leg. Uh, next exercise that's also gonna calm down your hamstrings or calm down your quads and relax your knees so you're not feeling it is turning on your hamstrings. So we've done this one for the, for the hip pain episode. Oh, break, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh you're switching, he's like, I'm tired. Was, yeah. All right, so he'll get to feel what this one feels like. All right, so you're gonna stick your heels up on the chair. You could use a chair, you could use your ottoman, you could use a bench. You really don't need a nice whole lot of equipment. This is good. <laughs> Just wait. There's more? <laughs> so you're gonna make your low back touch the floor, relax your head, slightly bend your knees. So you've got a little bit of flexion in there. Push down into your heels, and then you should feel those hamstrings mm -hmm. kick in. Can you push down more so you get that full stretch in the front, but it doesn't go into your back? Good, and then lower down and repeat. So make sure you feel both the same. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling one more than the other, work on the one that you don't feel as much. Like really focus on pushing that heel into the, the chair or whatever it is you're they're pushing into. And make sure you keep the pelvic tilt the whole time. Keeping the pelvic tilt mainly so you don't feel your back. So if you're ah, feeling okay. your back, then pelvic tilt more. If you're not really feeling your back, mm -hmm. it's not as important to focus okay. on that. Um, but yeah, 
So you got it. So until you're yeah. tired, you might feel your hip flexors, the front of your legs starting to relax. So the tightness, yeah. the tension starts to go away and your hamstrings really begin to fatigue. And that's when you know you're I definitely feel it right away. Tired? Yeah. yeah, this is a good one. And then if you want to get really fancy, can you push down through both, come on up, and then tap one leg to the side without letting anything move and bring it right back. To the side. So tap, yep, to the side, and then bring it back. So you just focus on your right yeah. leg a little more, tap the right to the right, you focus on the left, and then you could lower down and repeat. So it just oh. kind of increases the challenge, kind of brings it more to a unilateral yeah. single leg exercise without like really lifting everything up through one. But okay. if you want to really go crazy, lift one leg, push down through the other, and do a whole body hamstring bridge. Lift one leg. So, yep, and then push through your right. Yeah, there you go, good. Mm -hmm. So single leg hamstring bridge. Mm -hmm. Just advances it a little bit more. Perfect, yeah, you, you got it. The shaking's good. Yeah, the, right. <laughs> the shaking means it's working. So we've got glutes, we've got hamstrings. The next muscle that intervenes on the knee and can decompress it, your, if your knee joint is really bothering you, again, muscles are shock absorbers. They take the pressure off the joint. So your hip muscle, muscles up here, are the main things that can influence that, along with all the other muscles around your legs. So we're gonna go to the hip, outer hip, glute med. Um, I think we're gonna try a side plank for this one. Okay. We've done some other ones. Um, so the bottom leg is the one that you're focusing on. So you're gonna go on your side, on your forearm. And if you have a shoulder, shoulder pain, I wouldn't recommend this because the shoulder needs to be pretty strong and not in pain to be able to do this. This is a modified side plank, so it really focuses on the hip muscle before going to the ankles. So you're gonna bend your knees. Good, and so you're gonna focus on pushing down into your knee to lift your body off the ground. Mm -hmm. So first get your shoulder set, so bring your elbow right underneath your shoulder, push your body away from your elbow so your shoulder's nice and strong. Good, so it's kind of set it. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna push it down into your knee so that your hips come forward and up. Just like here. There you go, so you come to a straight line here and you should feel that bottom hip yeah, muscle working. I mm -hmm. And I think it's easier to lift the knee here oh, so like you this? kind of feel this more. Oh, yeah. And it helps you yeah. push down into yeah. that leg more. Yep. And then you release everything down and back. So you're kind of going mm -hmm. from a V position to a, to a totally right. flat and extended position. So you're getting that hip flexor stretch in the front. You're feeling that bottom hip working. You shouldn't feel it in your side. You shouldn't feel it like here. Yeah, That's like working, but it's not the main moving part. A lot of people feel side planks in their obliques. And that's not really the moving part. You really want your hip to do the work, especially if you're trying to tackle knee pain with this. You want to feel your hip doing the work. Yeah, and here you feel really isolated. In really there. isolated yeah. and strong. Yeah. So you're coming from like a flex position to a straight position. So yeah. you do it on the other side or kind of see, is it easier on the left? Is it easier on the right? Whichever mm -hmm. one is harder, I'd focus on that if you have knee pain on one knee. And you might notice that the knee that hurts, the side plank is actually harder on the other side. So I'd work on that one. Mm, okay. Sometimes the balance isn't, the imbalance isn't where you'd expect it. That would, yeah, that, that's interesting. Sometimes yeah. your right knee could hurt because that one's doing all the work because the left hip isn't actually pulling its weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's a side plank. Um, and then the other muscle in your legs, so we've got quads that we're trying to turn off. We've got hamstrings and glutes that we recruited, outer hip muscles we recruited. The next muscle is your calf muscle, so it's an important one to address, but your ankle needs to be able to move enough. So if you don't have ankle mobility, then your knee might bother you when you're walking because if it's stiff and it can't actually move this way, all of the pressure might go to your knee if you're a runner, whatever. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna do a simple ankle stretch. And this is for the joint. It's not necessarily to stretch your calf or your soleus, but it might be more of a soleus stretch. You've got two muscles behind your knee. You're gonna put one uh, knee here and your other foot in front, so you're gonna be in that position. Good, so we're focusing on the front ankle here, and what you're gonna do is trying to keep your heel down on the ground, going straight forward over your second toe. How far can you get your knee towards that wall? Oh, Perfect, try to keep heel that heel down, yeah. So you may feel a stretch back here, yeah, or you might feel a stiffness in the front. For me, I feel much more soleus. Good, so if you get about four inches past your big toe with that knee, then you're probably fine and don't really need to work on this. And you're pretty close there. Good, and then back. If you're noticing mm -hmm. that your knee only goes to your big toe or not even mm -hmm. to your big toe, then it's probably something that you should work on. So if this is, you know, he's got a good four inches keeping that heel down, 
So I'd say this is probably something you don't need to work on, but it's something to check in on. It's the first thing you've ever said that, said that to me about. Nice job. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> and then I would go into strengthening the calves and the, the soleus. So you've got two, or the gastroc and soleus. So you've got two muscles behind your, your leg. Everyone calls it the calf muscle, but you've got a soleus and a gastroc. So soleus is active when your knee is bent. Gastroc is active when your knee is straight. So you do both. So we're going to use the step over here. And you could use the bottom step of your stairs. You're going to stand on that and slide your heels off the back. You could hold onto the wall. So you're going to drop your heels down to get a good calf stretch, keeping your toes pointed forward. And then push through your toes, raise on up as high as you can. Good. And then your ankles like to come apart. So if you imagine like squeezing a towel, I would give them a towel. There you go. And then lower down. And then repeat till your calves are tired. Knees straight, you're going to feel it higher mm -hmm. in these muscles. And then the tricky part with the soleus heel raise is if you bend your knees, can you keep your knees and hips the same and still raise your body weight and you'll feel it lower? Yeah. So that's soleus. As long as it doesn't bother your knee. So if this bothers your knee, which it might, skip it and there's another way to do this, but this is probably the more challenging way. You got it. That's great. Good. So then those are all the muscles that really affect your leg and are in your lower leg. With the exception of adductors, we didn't do that, but got a pretty good ones to really address knee pain. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank, thank you for walking us through those exercises. Thank you for Doing those glute and, bridges. And, yeah, yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> We've got seven more videos of glute right. bridges. <laughs> <laughs> They're the best. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like the video, please remember to like it on the, the where you click and subscribe to the channel. Um, and thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.